Hi guys, in this video I'm going to share with you some of the biggest mistakes you can make when you are in your 20s and how you can avoid them. Now, I've made some of those mistakes myself, so I speak from experience and I really believe in not reinventing the wheel, so hopefully you will find this video very useful. So one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to follow that predictable life path, to essentially follow the crowd just because you feel like you have to follow those unwritten rules imposed on you by this society, because we've all heard it many times. You have to go to school and get amazing grades so you can get to that great university. Then you have to study very hard so you can get that internship. Then you get a job, ideally something very safe and stable. You work hard so you can save up money. Then you build up family, you get a mortgage, you go on holiday once a year and eventually you retire to travel the world. Now, does it sound very exciting? Does it sound very compelling? Well, for most people it doesn't. And I'm not saying that there is something wrong with this path. But the problem is that so many people seem to be following it because it seems like something safe. It seems like this is the right path to take. But every single person living in this world is different. So this path may not be right for you. And I just want to encourage you to explore different options because I really believe that when you're in your 20s, this is the time to explore. This is the time to try new things, to get new experiences. You shouldn't simply get certain jobs just because you feel like this is something that you need to do just because you know people expect you to do certain things now Warren Buffett said something really funny namely he said that you know taking certain jobs just because they look good on your CV is kind of like saving up sex for the old age now when you think about it it's pretty funny but it also makes so much sense because so many people take certain jobs just because they feel like those things look great on their CVs but the reality is that, okay, it's, it's important to plan the future, it's important to have your vision, set your goals, but also you have to remember that you live here and now. So in your 20s, you gotta enjoy your life, you gotta try many different things. So the second tip is connected to the tip number one, and it's playing it safe. Because when you think about it, you can't get out of life alive. I don't remember who said it first, but when you think about it, it really makes sense. I mean, your life is ending one minute at a time, and at some point, we will all die. So we may as well take some risks in life. Now, the problem I see is that many people in their 20s are not willing to take risks. They take certain jobs, they do certain things just because they have that perception of safety. But you see, the reality is that there is no such a thing as playing it safe. I mean, really, when you think about it, when you think about today's economic environment, there is no such a thing as being safe. Now, back in the day, you could get a great corporate job and stay there for 20, 30, 40 years. But in today's world, people change jobs all the time. People start businesses, people move countries. You know, you have to be dynamic if you want to make something happen. And I believe that right now, when you are 20 something years old, now is the time to take those risks. Because when you think about it, even if you fail, even if that business idea doesn't work out, even if, let's say, you, you know, you embrace that new position in a, in a big company and for some reason you fail, it's totally fine because you can recover so quickly. When you're 20-something, you most probably don't have the family to take care of, right? You just have to take care of yourself. So you can try all of those different things, embrace various experiences to really figure out what you want to do in your life. Because the way I see it, and I say it many times in many of my other videos, the worst thing that can happen in you in your life is not not accomplishing your goals, okay? It's a bit counterintuitive, but the truth is that the worst thing that can happen to you in your life is accomplishing the wrong goals. So you get to the finish line, you get that goal that you were striving for, and you realize, wow, this is not what I truly wanted. I thought that I wanted that goal, but right now I don't see any value in it. And I've seen this situation many, many times. So for example, one of my friends got that corporate job and he always wanted to be a vice president, okay? That was his biggest goal, so he would work 15, 17 hours a day just to get that title because he felt like, wow, if I become a vice president, I'm gonna have that status, I'm gonna have the money, I'm gonna feel fulfilled. And then guess what? He gets the title, he is a VP. The first week, yes, we are celebrating, we are going to clubs, everything is great. But after one, two weeks, well, he goes back to normal, realizing that it doesn't really mean anything. It's just a title. It doesn't matter, okay? So um, it's very important that you, know, you live your life in a way that you don't regret certain things. And that's why I always say that when you are 20-something, you gotta experiment, you gotta take risks, you gotta embrace you know, the power of trying new things and essentially assume that 
you can fail and it's totally fine because we learn the most from failure. Now when you think about it, when everything is going well, you don't really ponder too much. When everything is going well, we tend to party, right? But when you fail at something, when things are not working the way you want them to, that's when you start thinking, pondering. That's when you come up with the best ideas. That, that's when you have some of your best experiences, right? So if you want something great in life, you got to play big. And by the way, an average person will work for more than 3,000 days. 3,000 days. And I'm not talking about 8-hour days. I'm talking about 3,000 24-hour days. Now, if you ask me, that's a pretty long time, especially if you do something that you simply don't enjoy doing. So you got to try different things and, and find out what it is that you want to do. Okay? So when you wake up in the morning, you are excited about your life. Now, I'm not sure if you know Robert Greene, but he's a best-selling author. He has written a bunch of amazing books. And by the way, I highly recommend that you check him out. But Robert had this amazing TED Talk where he admitted that by the time he turned 36, he had 50 different jobs. Five, zero, 50 different jobs. Now, it may sound a bit crazy. And of course, he said that he had some self-doubts. He had those moments when he felt like, hmm, Am I really doing the right thing? But deep inside, he felt that all of those experiences from different jobs, different countries, meeting different people, trying different things, will contribute to his grand vision, which was essentially becoming the best-selling writer. And well, this is precisely what happened. But you know, he said that he can trace it back to all of those experiences because he learned so much about himself, about the world, about other people, and this is what makes him such a great writer. Now, Steve Jobs said that you can't really connect the dots looking forward, right? So things happen in your life, you know, you can't connect those, dot, dot, those dots looking forward, but you can connect them later on in your life looking backwards. So you got to welcome all of those experiences and now is the time to play big. When you are in your 20s, now is the time to take those risks and, you know, instead of settling for something safe, because being safe is just an illusion. So if you want to win in life, if you want to get great things, you got to play big. You got to take risks. One of the biggest mistakes you can make in your 20s is to focus solely on your financial goals. Now, there's nothing wrong with making money. I mean, everybody likes making money. I like to make cash, you like to make cash. But the problem happens when you focus solely on making more and more money when you essentially sacrifice other areas of your life. So you don't think so much about your friendships, about gaining new experiences, learning new things, but the only focus in your life is just to make more and more cash. And actually, I see this tendency in many people's lives. Many people in their 20s start certain jobs and they work themselves to death, 15, 17, 18 hours a day, just to make more and more cash because they believe that at one point, when they make certain amounts of money, they will be happy everything will change, their lives will be different. Just like this, okay? That big financial reward will change everything. But you see, there is a problem with this thinking because you know, when people say that they want to be millionaires, they don't really want to have millions of dollars. Now you may be thinking, well, it doesn't really make sense, but let me explain. When people say that they want to make millions of dollars, they don't really want to walk around carrying suitcases with a ton of cash, right? Because let's say you are in a cold forest, what can you do with this money? Well, the only thing you can do is to burn it so you end up feeling warmer. So it's not about the physical value of money, but it's about all of those experiences and things that money can give you, right? So when people say that they want to make millions of dollars, they want to be millionaires, they simply want to have things and experiences that are supposedly reserved solely for those rich people. Now, what most people don't realize is that you don't need to make millions of dollars to live like a millionaire. And actually, I'm a very good example of this, okay? I'm traveling the world nonstop, and many people assume that I probably spend 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars a month because I do all of those crazy things. But the reality is that I spent way less than that, okay? It's just about hacking your life and trying to figure out how you can get the most value for the least amount of money. But many people in their 20s make that mistake of chasing that one dream of making a ton of money without really thinking about other areas of your life. And then they wake up one day realizing that, wow, I've made a ton of money, but I'm not really happy. I thought that it's gonna change everything, but actually nothing has changed, okay? I, I was happy for a couple of weeks, maybe for a couple of months, but now my life is the same and I have the same problems. And that's a very sad feeling. And I know many people who have those situations. In fact, 
I used to have those situations, okay? I used to be broke several times and I still vividly remember how I tried to make ends meet as a first year foreign student in the UK. So when I was going to the UK to study, I had to change my Polish zloty to pounds. And believe me, that was really painful because at one point I realized how poor I was. So I was eating beans and tuna every single day trying to save up money. But then later on, I got different jobs. I used to work for Goldman Sachs at some point. Then I built my business. So I started making more and more money. And at some point, I started making a very decent passive income. And of course, initially, I was really happy. I was exhilarated, like, wow, I'm making all this money. I can do whatever I want to do. If someone, would, if someone told me many years ago that I could live like this, I wouldn't have believed. But then, at some point, I realized that, you know, it becomes the new normal and it doesn't really bring you any more happiness. You still have problems, you still have challenges, and all of that money you are making doesn't really make such a difference, right? It becomes your normality. But unfortunately, many people believe that when they make that big amount of money, everything will change in their lives. Suddenly, they will be happy, but they don't understand something that Freud used to talk about, namely, Happiness is based on contrast, right? So how can you possibly appreciate the cold shower if it's cold outside? I mean, you would be like, whoa, I don't want to get into the water. But when it's stifling and hot outside, that's when you can appreciate that cold shower and vice versa. When it's cold outside, that's when you can appreciate warm bath. So in your life, you need contrast, okay? Happiness comes from contrast. And uh, I believe that way too many people spend too much time thinking about finances. Now again, Making money is important, but don't make that mistake in your 20s where you simply focus on financial goals, disregarding all of the other realms of your life because there is so much more to life. So you have to really think about other areas of your life as well. Will Smith said something very profound, namely, we spend money we don't have to buy things that we don't need to impress people that don't care. Now, when you think about it, it makes so much sense. So many of us do those things on a daily basis. We simply seek approval and validation of other people. Now, if you do it to some extent, there is no problem with that because we are just humans and it's normal that we seek validation and approval. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't dress the way we dress, right? We would just wear the same clothes every single day, not really caring about anything. So obviously this behavior is normal to some extent, but the problem happens when you know, your entire life is about seeking that approval from other people. When you wake up in the morning and you're walking through life, just looking around thinking, wow, will those people approve of me? Will they give me the validation? Will they don't reject me? You know, when you're thinking like this, you bas basically prevent yourself from taking certain important actions that matter to you, okay? So you wanna do certain things with your life, but you will not because you are afraid that you will not get that approval. So the crowd is here. And you kind of want to raise your head above, but you are afraid to do it because you simply don't know what other people will say about you. You are afraid of that rejection and you crave that validation. Now, the thing is that even if you are a saint, even if you end up helping you know, millions of people around the world, you will still have some people who will not like you. In fact, some people may still hate you. And we have many examples like this in history, right? There are so many people who achieved great things in life but they still get haters. So if they get haters, well, think about you. Think about us, normal people. So once you understand that you can't please everyone, everything becomes easier and it's so much you know, easier to destroy that validation-seeking behavior. And unfortunately, many people in their 20s make that mistake. So instead of following their path, instead of you know, working on things that they want to have in their lives, they do certain things because they feel that pressure from other people and they want to get that validation, they crave it. So I really invite you not to waste your time thinking about what other people want from you. Don't waste your time trying to please everyone, but think about yourself, what you can do to make yourself happy. One of the biggest mistakes people can make, in my opinion, is not exploring the world, not traveling, because the reality is that when you travel, you learn so much. I mean, in my opinion, this is the best university. That's when you learn the most, when you actually explore the world. And I'm not saying that you have to go nuts and travel like me all the time, but I honestly believe that you should spend at least some time exploring the unknown territories, you know, delving deeper into other cultures, meeting all of those people who live abroad, and 
finding out how people live, you know, what makes them tick. Because when you do that, you get so many great benefits. Now, I've made separate videos about this topic, but I would like to name some of the main benefits. Well, first of all, when you travel, you test your assumptions. Now, we all have certain assumptions about reality, the way the world works. But when we travel, we really test them and you learn so much and, you know, all of those travel experiences really impact your mindset. So, for example, many people believe that the world is a dangerous place. So, for example, when I was going to places like Brazil or Indonesia, people told me, man, you got to be really careful because it's so dangerous. I mean, Latin America, they're going to kidnap you and there are shootings and robberies and don't go to Bali because, you know, in Bali... Uh, there are many terrorists. You know, I, I heard so much of this crap, but the funny thing is that when I went to all of those places, I realized that it was actually very safe because our perception of danger is one thing and the actual danger is a different thing. So just because you see all of those news that there are different things going on in a certain country, it doesn't mean that this is the reality. Basically news, you know, uh, news stations take the reality and they actually take a small piece of it and they put this magnifying glass, okay? So you have a perception that it's so dangerous, but when you travel, when you explore the world, you realize that first of all, the world is much safer than you thought. And secondly, you realize that people are actually very similar. Because the thing is that when you live in one place, you may be thinking that people from different cultures are so different to you, that you wouldn't be able to get along with them, that you wouldn't be able to relate to them because they are so different. But when you travel a lot, you realize that there are more similarities than differences. I mean, I've been to more than 55 countries right now and I see certain patterns. I see that most people have the same aspirations, the same fears, very similar beliefs and needs, right? I mean, we are all really, really similar. And I've met people from, you know, multimillionaires, celebrities, to people who live on one dollar a day, literally people who live in villages on one dollar a day. And the interesting thing is that we are all so similar. I mean, really the differences are small. And when you travel, you get that different perspective. It actually makes you a better person because then you go back and you see people in a different way. You realize that we are all humans and you know, you just gotta respect everyone, right? Everyone is different, but at the same time, everyone is very similar to one another. So for me, that was one of the biggest lessons, you know, realizing that we should be open to other people because we share so many commonalities. So I believe that when you're in your 20s, you should embark on those journeys. You should be traveling, you should be exploring different territories because these are the experiences that nobody will take away from you. I mean, all of your experiences are yours. You may make a lot of money, you may buy a fancy car, you may buy a big house. Well, it may be taken away from you. You may lose it at some point. You never know, right? These are the material things. So I always believe that we have to invest a lot of time and effort in building this, our physical bodies, right? Being healthy and treating our bodies as our temples and really respecting our bodies and also building this, our minds, learning, experiencing things. These are the things that nobody will take away from you. So make sure that you travel, make sure that you spend some time exploring different territories. Now, many people say, well, I wish I could travel, but I can't. I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, I'm, you know, I'm too busy, uh, it's too dangerous. You know, people have all of those excuses, but they are what they are, excuses. Because there are many people around the world who basically, you know, have the same circumstances or even worse circumstances, and they still manage to travel. Now, once again, I don't mean that you should be traveling all the time, but you know you can travel at least from time to time and uh, it's all about your priorities. So for example, I meet people who tell me, well, I wish I could travel like you, but I don't have enough money. But then I look at their shoes and I realize that they just paid $250 for those brand new shoes. Now, is there something wrong with paying this much money for shoes? No, of course not, you can't do it, but it's about your priorities. If buying fancy shoes is your priority, if buying that latest iPhone is your priority, right? If buying that fancy t-shirt for 150 bucks is your priority, that's fine. But then don't, you know, moan that, oh my God, I can't travel it's so bad, I don't have enough money. I see many people doing this, right? Now, some people legitimately don't have enough money to travel, right? But there are many different ways. For example, you can work abroad, right? You can do exchange programs. You can start an online business. I know that it's easier to say, than, than to do it, but there's so many different ways. You can hitchhike. I mean, one of my first big trips, I actually took 200 euros 
literally two pieces of paper, 100 euros each, and I managed to travel more than 3,000 kilometers for three weeks across Europe. I was hitchhiking, I was sleeping on beaches, I would meet random people and, and sleep in their places, and it was totally fine. It was a great adventure, right? So I literally spent what I would normally spend in one day in three weeks. So it is possible, but as I said, it's just about your, your priorities and it's about thinking outside the box. Because the moment when you put yourself in that box where you say to yourself, well, I, I guess I can't do it because I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, blah, 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 blah. That's when you will not find the reasons and the power to actually come up with some type of solution. So I believe that the first step is to simply decide. I want to explore the world, I want to travel more, you know, I want to see what's out there. And once you make that decision and once you commit that you will do whatever it takes to make it happen, that's when suddenly you will see solutions everywhere. So um, really one of the best things you can do in your 20s is to travel, to explore the world. Don't make the mistake of just being in one place and assuming that, hey, you know what, I can't be bothered, I would rather stay where I am now because it's comfortable. Don't be comfortable, you know, there's this uh, cool picture I saw online one day, you know, you had the circle and it said comfort zone, there was like the arrow and it said the magic happens here. The magic happens outside of your comfort zone. So you gotta make sure that you push your comfort zone and traveling is one of the best ways to do it. And finally, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is getting stuck in unhealthy relationship that have no future. Now, this is a little bit uncomfortable topic because, well, you may be thinking, all right, it's easy to talk about those situations, but it's much tougher when you have one of those situations, right? And I know what you mean because I used to have those situations myself in my life. But you see, the problem is that many people, they enter different relationships, everything is going very well, and then suddenly things stop working out. Now, obviously you wanna work on that relationship, but sometimes you get to the point where there is a wall and you realize that there is no future. You simply know for a fact that things will not get better. Maybe you are going this direction in life, but perhaps your partner has totally different aspirations, different value system, different belief system, and they are going that direction. So you know that things will end at some point, but for some reason, we get stuck in those relationships. And it's very simple actually, you know, the fear of rejection, the fear of being alone, you know, that strange feeling, you know, the thought that they may have somebody else and you feel that jealousy even though you don't really want to be with them and so on. So we have all of those feelings and it's easier to stay in that comfortable situation, in that relationship with a person you know, rather than saying to yourself, well, I'm just going to embrace the unknown and I'm just going to go for it. It's not easy and I know about it. But I see that many people waste so much of their lives getting stuck in unhealthy relationships just for the sake of feeling safe. But that feeling of security is just a perception. It's not the reality because if you are going different directions, well, it's gonna end at some point anyway. And I believe that it's better if it ends now than after five or 10 years. So maybe when you have a family together, when you have kids together. So again, I know that it's not easy to you know, talk about this subject because Obviously, I can stand here in front of the camera and tell people, hey, you should quit unhealthy relationships. But once you are attached to that person, once you have all of that sentiment, it's, it's much tougher, right? But I believe that it's important. And I had this situation, I broke up with my ex, and I gotta tell you, for a few months, I felt like shit. You know, for a few months, I would question myself, and I would say to myself, hmm, maybe I made the wrong decision. Maybe that was a mistake. But later on, because of the fact that we, we decided to break up, I explored so many new opportunities in my life. My business went like this. I started traveling, exploring the world, and I got so many great opportunities that otherwise wouldn't be available to me, right? So I believe that when you are, I mean, not only in your 20s, I mean, anytime when you are stuck in unhealthy relationship, when you've been trying everything to work on it, to make it better, but you feel this wall, you feel like it's not going anywhere, it's better to say to yourself, well, I'm gonna suffer in short term, so I can basically live a great life in long term. All right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some great food for thought. Now, if you have any questions, any comments, please let me know, go ahead and post a comment. And by the way, if you feel like your friends can benefit from this video, just go ahead and share it on social media.